Okay, so today we're going to be discussing a topic I see come up a lot, and that's Draco Malfoy, or more specifically, the redemption arc he supposedly deserves. I see a ton of people saying that he deserved a redemption arc in the books, and that even he deserved it a lot more than some characters that got one. This is not going to be an in-depth character analysis, and it's also not going to be a headcanon I have of how I would have liked things to go. Instead, we're going to look at the character and actions of Draco, and in the end, discuss, did he deserve a redemption arc? Draco Malfoy, son of Lucius and Narcissa Malfoy, who joined the Dark Lord in his plot to murder all Muggleborns and purify the wizarding race, keeping only the purest blood. We see from our first time meeting him that Draco was raised under prejudice that was so deeply ingrained in him that blood superiority was important to him too, that the Dark Lord's Hogwarts house is the best, and that blood traitors are scum. Throughout the early books, we see Malfoy bully, antagonize, lie, and showcase his own prejudice that he has accepted from his parents to many people he deems worse than himself for all blood classes. Malfoy continued his general pattern of cruelty through his first few years of school, and we see that as he's given more power as a prefect, he happily abuses it, picking on anyone not in his own house. Then later, when Umbridge takes charge of the school, he continues to abuse his power, docking points and becoming a professional snitch, and even showing how drawn to evil he really is as he helps Umbridge capture Dumbledore's army and is excited at the idea of her torturing students. Draco was a terrible kid, a kid that bullied his peers, attacked anyone he thought was weaker than him, including his teachers, who was very drawn to evil and who believed in blood supremacy and supported the cause. Yes, this was ingrained in him as a young child. But at this age, he's old enough to be questioning the things that were taught to him, but instead, he leans into them. But after Lucius fails in his mission to deliver the prophecy from the Department of Mysteries, the Malfoys fall out of the Dark Lord's good graces. Now that they're the target of his wrath, we see the three descend from a lust for his power and hatred into fear and revulsion toward him, and the beginnings of change. In book six, now that Draco has more power given to him by the Dark Lord, he continues with his threats and general horribleness, but suddenly he doesn't care about the things that once gave him a power trip. Though now that he's forced to fulfill a seemingly impossible task, we start to see him change. He starts looking ill and stops trusting Snape, someone he looked up to up to this point. He desperately tries killing Dumbledore many times, nearly killing others in the process. And then when he finally is able to fix the cabinet, he's thrilled. But when it comes to the time to kill Dumbledore for real, he can't do it. But he also can't give up on his mission to kill him because he feels he doesn't have a choice. Eventually, the choice was made for him, and while he was saved from having to commit the murder himself, he still leaves with the Death Eaters and continues to be on Voldemort's side, albeit reluctantly, into Book 7. Now Book 7 kicks off with the knowledge that Voldemort has been living in the Malfoy Manor with the Malfoys over the summer. We see that the Malfoys now see Voldemort differently. They don't want to make eye contact with him, and they're flinching when he's near them. Yet, they remain loyal to him, and when the trio is brought into the manor, the parents are thrilled to be able to get back into their master's good graces, though Draco seems to have already started to lose his loyalty. He refuses to rat them out, even though it's clear to everyone else who they are. However, even though we see the beginnings of the shift, it's only a small shift, as he does still continue to actively fight to fulfill Voldemort's will. And while you could argue that he didn't want Crabbe and Goyle to kill Harry because of the change of heart he was starting to have, I really think it's more of him still trying to execute Voldemort's will, despite not really wanting to anymore. Now we get a couple more scenes of him being loyal to his friends, saying he's a Death Eater to save his skin, and more. But I want to skip forward to his parents. We continue to see the descent of the Malfoys' composure as they fear for their son's lives, and we see that their love for their son has become much stronger than their loyalty to their master. Until, finally, we actually see their loyalty to him break. 
Narcissa could have easily asked Harry about Draco, gotten her answer, and then revealed that he was alive and turned him over to her master. But she didn't. Her loyalty had changed. Then we see them during the final battle, rushing through Hogwarts, not fighting, not picking a side, but looking for their son. And finally, in the end, when Voldemort is dead and Hogwarts is recovering, the Malfoys stayed behind in Hogwarts. They didn't seem to fit, and they were huddled together, keeping to themselves. But why stay? Why not leave and go back to their manor? Why not leave with the other Death Eaters that survived the battle? Why stay in Hogwarts with the side that they were previously opposed to? I feel like this alone says a lot about how different things are for them at this point. Now, don't get me wrong. By the end of Book 7, the Malfoys didn't change their blood superiority. They just changed their loyalty. But this is better, in my opinion, because if someone's been actively participating in genocide and then suddenly see how inhumane they've been and how horrifying their actions have been and how terrible their cause is, it's not going to be a flip of the switch. When they started being affected by the hatred they peddled, they realized that they didn't want to be a part of it anymore. Now, after Book 7 ended, did they change their blood superiority? We don't know. Maybe they stopped being outwardly and actively fighting for this cause that they've been a part of for so long, but maintained their thoughts on blood superiority and their stance of being better than everyone else, just on a smaller scale. Or maybe they did continue on the track that we saw starting in books six and seven, and they actually did have a full arc and change what they believed. We don't really know, and I think it's better this way. I actually love that this was open-ended because an absolute change in the fabric of who you are and what you believe and what you've devoted your life to fight for would have been such a hollow redemption. We don't know if the Malfoys got a full redemption arc and after we ran out of pages, their arc continued or if it didn't. Honestly, it could have gone either way. They could have become better people or they could have maintained who they were and just not been actively fighting for the cause anymore. And I think there's beauty in that kind of honesty. I think that if they had a full redemption arc in the seven books, it would have been such a hollow redemption because it takes serious time to have a full character arc from participating in genocide to fighting alongside the good guys. That takes time, that takes precision, that takes backsliding, that takes internal struggle. It would not have been satisfying if it happened in book seven. So do the Malfoys, or more specifically, Draco, deserve a redemption arc in these books? I think no. I think that it was actually written pretty perfectly, open-ended enough that there's potential, there's possibility for them to continue fighting for their redemption, but not easy enough that there was no fight whatsoever and it just happened because we wanted it to. There's nothing more unsatisfying than a hollow redemption, and I'm really, really glad that we didn't get that in the books. I also really like speculating, do I think that they would have been redeemed or not? I think that Draco is a lot more likely to have had some sort of a redemption arc after it was all done than Narcissa and uh, Lucius. I think that they would have more likely maintained their stature and their beliefs of blood superiority, but, to kept, but would have kept it to themselves rather than trying trying to fight for the cause more, and Draco would have been more likely to have actually fought for change. But it would have had to have been a fight. He would have had to change his entire belief system and what makes what, ha what his identity is wrapped up in. That would be a Zuko-level arc, and frankly, that takes time, that takes work, that takes focus, and it would have been disappointing to try to cram it into the books. I love the way the arcs played out. I love speculating, would he have actually fought for his redemption, or would he have stayed pretty much where we left him in book seven, kind of in between, not really loyal to anyone? I think that both could happen, and I love that. I'm really curious to keep discussing this. I want to know what you guys think. Do you like the idea of him having a redemption arc? Do you think it could have happened? Do you think that he would have been more likely to kind of stay where he was and not have a full arc? And what are some scenes from the books that you can bring up in the conversation showing maybe why you think what you think? I love continuing these discussions, so please keep chatting with me about it in the comments. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon. Thank you.